I put him on my lap and his lips were moving. I thought, oh, he's okay, and that was it. that was his last movement. Um, and then I was, went and stayed in the bedroom where the coffin was. Uh, that was hard. And then Keith made us pick him out the coffin, and I was only 10, gave him a kiss and that, and it was horrible. And uh, I ended up with loads of chicks for a few years. I remember Roy Keane once, I just told him all the time, because I said he was a new kid on the block, and I remember going down the tunnel and I said, Roy, you reckon you're the new kid in the block? Welcome to your worst nightmare. And it was one more nil, but he said afterwards in the new, in the papers, he said, thank God that game's over with. He says, I've never been talked to so much in my life. I used to say, I'm, I'm, having, I'm sleeping with your wife. <laughs> Evan in the 19s. And I was up in his office and he says, Gaza, what's this kid? And I says, how old is he? He went 14. I said, what's his name? He said, Wayne Rooney. And I says, on the 19s, he's only 14. He went, yeah, put him on in a minute. I think it was 20 minutes ago, and I put him on. Fucking hell, he scored two goals. It was incredible. Looking back in the semi-final, Paul, do you wish you would have took a penalty? Yeah, you know, my mind was just all over the place, you know. Sometimes it was OK, sometimes it was scary. I just felt like I couldn't go anywhere. I felt trapped indoors. Um, I mean, the, the, the public were fantastic towards us, but just wherever I went, you know. Um, and then, obviously, then the press started, and that's when I found it really hard, because the, the amount of lies... The amount of lies they had on us was just horrific, you know, they were just constantly telling lies. It was murder. I even, I, sometimes I'd be in London and I'd see a couple of cars and a motorbike behind us and I'd have to ring up the police, pull over, police come up, block them in and make me drive off. And then obviously there was the phone hacking. And I went to the toilet in the dark, it was two o'clock, and I touched the door handle. Next thing I know, I've got someone with a hand around my neck with a gun to me head. He just said, you know, if you score, do the sash. And I went, what's a sash? He says that, and he showed us. He says, the fans that love it. When he said that, and he says, the fans that love it, and I went, ooh, I'll do anything for the fucking fans. I says, what's, what was he going to kill us? I went, yeah. He said, fuck me, what are you going to do about it? I went, nothing. He says, until he comes to the, our country, so we're not going to hang around the airport. So when I used to play, I used to look in the crowd and fucking look to see if anyone's got a gun and that. You know, if I think of any, any teams, I'd, I'd love to play, go back and play for all, but Rangers be the one. Well, when you quit, you think, what am I going to do now? You know, and I didn't really want to go into management. I did try it, kept in manager. It's funny, the chairman says, Paul, get out of the third division. I did, I put them in the fucking fourth. <laughs> <laughs> After that, you know, that round war thing, I really honestly thought it was my friend and I didn't realise what he had did to other people until obviously after about two weeks when I pulled myself around and thought, fucking hell.